Attack Potency Tiering Explained. I'm going to be 100% honest, with this video I'm being a little lazy, meaning, I'm mostly going to be referencing the tiering of another site, and only give statement changes where I feel they need be. Also, if you disagree, that's perfectly fine, just comment down below where you think I made a mistake. Lastly, if you rather just get the results of between below human and universal, there is a table in the description. Also time stamps in the description for each tier. Below human, is saying that they are weaker than most human beings. For comparison 20 joules is the total energy a baby uses to stand up for the first time. Using the same kind of comparison 100 joules is around that of a normal human being themselves. At the athlete level, they uses the amount of energy athletes generate. However, their range is partly out, you'll see what I mean. In the next level they go from 300 joules to 15,000 joules. I would change the tier, because there are monster athletes like Dwight Howard, can produce up to 1,200 joules with his vertical jump. After human level should be above average human level, at 100 to 300 joules. Athlete should be 300 to 2,000 joules. Street can then be 2,000 to 15,000 joules. Wall level, 15,000 joules to 21 million joules, which is also 3.5 grams of TNT to 5 kilograms of TNT. Small building level, 21 million to 1 billion joules, or 5 kilograms to 250 kilograms of TNT. Building level, 1 billion to 8 billion joules, or 250 kilograms to 2 tons of TNT. Large building level, 8 billion to 46 billion joules, or 2 to 11 tons of TNT. City block level, 46 billion to 418 billion joules, or 11 to 100 tons of TNT. Multi-city block level, 418 billion to 4.2 trillion joules, or 100 tons to 1 kiloton of TNT. Small town level. 4.2 trillion to 24 trillion joules, or 1 to 5.8 kilotons of TNT. Town level, 24 trillion to 418 trillion joules, or 5.8 to 100 kilotons of TNT. Large town level, 418 trillion to 4.2 quadrillion joules, or 100 kilotons to 1 megaton of TNT. Small city level. 4.2 quadrillion to 26 quadrillion joules, or 1 to 6.3 megatons of TNT. City level, 26 quadrillion to 418 quadrillion joules, or 6.3 to 100 megatons of TNT. Mountain level, 418 quadrillion to 4.2 quintillion joules, or 100 megatons to 1 gigaton of TNT. Large mountain level. 4.2 quintillion to 18 quintillion joules, or 1 to 4.3 gigatons of TNT. Island level, 18 quintillion to 418 quintillion joules, or 4.3 to 100 gigatons of TNT. Large island level, 418 quintillion to 4.2 sextillion joules, or 100 gigatons to 1 teraton of TNT. Small country level. 4.2 sextillion to 29 sextillion joules, or 1 to 7 teratons of TNT. Country level, 29 sextillion to 418 sextillion joules, or 7 to 100 teratons of TNT. Large country level, 418 sextillion to 3.2 septillion joules, or 100 to 760 teratons of TNT. Continental level. 3.2 septillion to 18.5 septillion joules, or 760 teratons to 4.4 petatons of TNT. I should point out that continental level isn't just destroying all life on the surface, but destroying the very land mass itself, you don't need continental attack potency to eliminate all life on Earth. For example, what killed all the dinosaurs? Multi-continental level, 18.5 septillion to 124 octillion joules, or 4.4 petatons to 29.6 exatons of TNT. Moon level, 124 octillion to 1.8 nonillion joules, or 29.6 to 433 exatons of TNT. Small planet level, 
1.8 nonillion to 249 nonillion joules, or 433 exatons to 59 zetatons of TNT. Our moon is in the higher end of moon level, similarly, Earth is in the higher end of small planet level. There shouldn't be a base planet level, there are two types of planets, rocky planets are usually smaller and max at around Earth size. Large planets are known as gas giants and are within the range given. So large planetary should be the only tier here. Large planet level, 249 nonillion to 69 undecillion joules, or 59 zetatons to 16.5 ninatons of TNT. Dwarf star level, 69 undecillion to 31 duodecillion joules, or 16.5 ninatons to 7.5 tenatons of TNT. Star level, 31 duodecillion to 569 duodecillion joules, or 7.5 to 136 tenatons of TNT. Just to say, dwarf stars and small stars aren't the same thing, dwarf stars are remnants of small stars that died. I'm skipping star level, much like planets there is a big difference between small and large stars, small stars die and become dwarf stars, large stars collapse into black holes. Large star level, 569 duodecillion to 2.3 quadrillion joules, or 7.5 tenatons of TNT to 22.8 fo. Note that 1 fo is the power of a type 1a supernova, at 400 tritacillion joules or 95.6 tenatons of TNT. Now here is the bit where I no longer use the wiki at all. Let's start with solar system level. How to define the tier is to see how much energy is needed to get in and out of the tier. Getting into the tier is easy, it's 22.8 fo as mentioned before. Getting out means we need to calculate what is needed to destroy our solar system and the next one. The Nereus star is 40 quadrillion meters away from Earth. The equation to see how much energy it would take to destroy the star is as such. Which equals 6.5 times 10 to the 56 joules or 3.2 billion times destroying our solar system. Range for solar system level. 22.8 fo to 1.63 trillion fo. That's 2.3 quadrillion to 651 septicillion joules or 760 tenatons to 156 trillion tenatons of TNT. Now for multi-solar system level. High end. Looking at the size of dwarf galaxies which are actually the most common type of galaxies in the universe. The smallest dwarf galaxy is Segway 2 being only 222 light years across with radius of 110.89 light years, and a number of stars of just 1000. To destroy this galaxy you need this. Which is 4.54 times 10 to the 62 joules. From this point onwards I'm just going to display numbers like this, in the description as the table of results with all things converted. Quick side note. I have been asked in the comment section about star systems. I feel I should share my findings. Star systems range in destructive requirements a lot. Small star systems like Algol is barely solar system level. Large star systems like Omega Centauri is so big that it's bigger than the smallest galaxy. Moving on to large galaxy. Interestingly the Milky Way is a large galaxy, and in my How Strong is Brawly video I calculated it to be 1.0 times 10 to the 76 joules. However, the Milky Way isn't the largest galaxy. The largest galaxy is IC1101. The equation for its destructive potency is this. Which is 1.4767 times 10 to the 82 joules. Now galaxies have many different formats, and because of such multi-galaxy isn't a very good tier. Now for local galaxy group busting. The maths for this is like for the galaxies and we just look at the number of stars and planets, as well as how far apart they are. However, something that does need to be accounted for is the energy needed to destroy the black holes in each large galaxy. The equation is horrific.
This equates to 1.365 times 10 to the 82 joules or about the same as the large galaxy. Going larger into two super galaxy clusters, we get something like the Virgo supercluster. We get an equation looking like this. This is 1.126 times 10 to the 87 joules. Now we get to universal, the maths for this is relatively similar and I don't think people mind me skipping ahead, what I will say is that it's based off the most accepted observable universe model. I split universal into two tiers. Universe level, where you destroy all things that can make life being, stars and planets. Universal plus, where you destroy all things in that universe. Universe equals 5.76176 times 10 to the 97 joules. Universal plus equals 3.3076 times 10 to the 103 joules. Now we get to the big ones. Multiversal can be split into three tiers, low, mid and high. I was able to give these tiers a number in my dimensions video. If you don't like the idea of giving a number, ignore the next part. Low multiversal. 3.3076 times 10 to the 103 joules to 1.0287 times 10 to the 121 joules. Mid multiversal. 1.0287 times 10 to the 121 joules to 3.199 times 10 to the 138 joules. High multiversal. 3.199 times 10 to the 138 joules to 9.95923 times 10 to the 155 joules. Now we get into a tier I don't like, purely because of its name. Complex multiversal is from low 5D to 11D, this is because of real life string theory only goes up to 11D. This range would be 9.95923 times 10 to the 155 joules to 2.0773154622 times 10 to the 523 joules. 11D looks like this. Now we get into hyperversal. Hyperversal is anywhere from 11D to infinite D. At this point numbers become irrelevant. Also a side note, omniversal is the collection of all dimensions from 1D, 2D, 3D, infinite D. This makes omniversal slightly larger than infinite D but not by much. This is where numbers end, but not fiction. After hyperversal we get outerversal. Outerversal is to be outside dimensionality of the verse. This level of power is normally seen with the strongest of abstract beings from infinite dimensional verse, or from platonic concepts as they exist beyond dimensions as a whole. Now being beyond all dimensionality is different than just beyond a dimension, for example being beyond the fifth dimension isn't the same as being beyond dimensionality as a whole. Oh and we can still get bigger. After outerversal we get the metafictional level. At this tier of power, where someone can forcefully interact with the continuity or story that they are in. One extra condition, I'm making for this tier, is that you need to scale past outerversal characters before you can enter this tier. Think of this level as being able to casually interact with every platonic concept at the same time, dot and the greater. Example, Deadpool, he can interact with the story with his fourth wall ability, but he has no outerversal scaling, meaning he can't be included. Same can be said for 4D God movie Goku, he has a metafictional feat, a really good one, but since he doesn't have any outerversal scaling he doesn't count either, because of the extra rule I added, that makes the tier more well defined in my eyes. However, Milkman, Mr. Mixie, Oblivion and several metafictional characters do have both the scaling and metafictional feats. After metafictional level we get the box. The box is a representation of that fictional continuity as a whole, and it has more than an infinite metafictional layer that transcends each other. 
The first layer of the box would be the metafictional layer. The difference between below human level and metafictional is the same between metafictional and the next layer. The only verse I've seen that has anything like this is the DC Comics, they have the Leviathan of stories with an identical description, there is a fair chance that, Cthulhu Mythos, Azaloth is also at this level as it dreams countless outerversal concepts each transcending the last, sadly I don't know enough to make a fiar judgment here. However, even this isn't the highest tier, just the highest cosmological structure. As you all expected the highest tier is true omnipotence. Being all-powerful means you transcend everything. Nothing else to say, besides this tier is the tier that requires the most amount of evidence without any contradictions. Thank you for watching. Next video, speed tiering.